Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is another thrift flip video where I take items and upcycle them for resale. I am so excited about today's project because we're just going to be experimenting and using things I've used before but in a different way and it's something I've wanted to do for a while. So I'm so excited just to be experimenting and trying different things and seeing how they come out. It's also a little bit of a trash to treasure because what we're gonna be using is these paint cans which i'm sure all of y'all have laying around the house i've had these forever i knew i was going to want to use them for a video so as i emptied out a paint can i just threw it on the side of my house and waited for the day and today is the day that we're going to do this so i have plastic ones i have rusty ones i have big ones i have small ones i have all kinds of different paint cans and all kinds of different ideas so yeah we're just gonna try different stuff and see how they come out i have a feeling it's gonna be amazing but we'll see so this is what i have that we're gonna use i have modes ild mode the bird one how cute i have clay this one's from ild the air dry clay this one's from amazon and i have stamps so of course all the products i use today will be in the description below so I've never used the molds before, but I have used the stamps before, but not in the way we're going to use them this time. So let's just go ahead and get started and experiment with all these things. I'm going to start with the piece that has been the most popular in the Julie's Designs and Signs Facebook group. I have the link to this group in the description below if you want to follow it. But a few of y'all have shared this exact project. So I wanted to start with this one and then just experiment from here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the clay and I am just putting it in the center of my paint can and I'm just pushing it down. You do not want it to be too thick. It does not need to be thick. And I was like, I haven't used clay since college and I was surprised how fun this really was and how easy it was to use. So I actually did read the directions. I know it's shocking. I read the directions and it said to use like lotioned hands or water, which I try water later on, but actually I find it much easier to move around just straight out of the package. So that's what I recommend. It was really easy to push and move around. It's kind of like pizza dough, but a little bit easier than pizza dough. I would definitely not be scared to try this. Just go for it. Okay, now I'm using my IOD crockery stamp, just one of them. This whole stamp set comes with a bunch of different stamps. So I just pick one that I liked and I'm just pushing it into the clay, just working my way around, making sure all the little details are in there. And then, oh my God, I can't wait for y'all to see it when I pull it off. Look at that. I think it came out so good. I was so excited and like this was so easy. I was I was really happy with how easy and fun this was and you'll see later on in the video I really just go to town experimenting. I was really having a ton of fun with this. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm just pushing on the edges. So I want the stamp part to be a little bit more raised. And then where the stamp stops, I'm just pushing it down and trying to get it as thin as possible onto the paint can. Now, you did notice that I didn't use any glue or anything to adhere the clay. I think that once it's dry and just pushing it onto the paint can like this, and then the paint on top of it that I'm gonna do later on, I think that is gonna be sufficient to get this to stick to the paint can. So I didn't use any kind of glue or anything for this particular process. Now let me talk about these stamps for a minute. I've been doing this seriously for about five years and I just started using these products. And this set of stamps cost about $30. So they are a little bit expensive, but I would totally go out and spend $30 on a tool if it was something I'd be able to use over and over again. And that's what these stamps are. The $30 and there's something that you continue 
that you will be able to use over and over and over again? Is it something you need? No, but if you want it, I think you should go and sell something for $30 and buy yourself a new tool. That's how I think of it anyway. Like I don't go out and buy all kind of stuff to start a project. I just slowly grow my tools over time, selling stuff and reinvesting some of that money into my business. Okay, what I'm doing now is I got some water and I'm just smoothing out all of my um like finger marks because I don't want that to show up. And once you add some water to the clay, it kind of like activates it and it makes it where you can smooth it out and everything. So for this part, I like the water and I'm just trying to push down on those edges and get them as thin as possible onto the paint can. Now I want to see how the farmhouse stamps transfer onto the clay. So I'm just taking my clay and pushing it down. Okay, if you haven't figured it out, you might want to put something on each side of your paint can so that it doesn't roll like mine all over the place. And also when you're not using your clay, put it in a Ziploc bag because it does dry really fast. So I'll put the rabbit like on top of my paint can to kind of use it, use it as side size reference but and then I kept checking to make sure it was the right size and then I realized I had the stamp the wrong way so make sure if you're using it as size reference you have the stamp facing the right way so that it actually works and I ended up having to just use a whole bunch of clay and just cover like Ha most of the front of this paint can to try to do this <laughs> anyway we're experimenting i'm figuring it out for y'all right now so we're just seeing how this goes i have never done this before i've never messed with this clay i've never tried this process before so we're just having fun we're having fun and experimenting even though i'm putting more clay on i'm still keeping it very thin so it's just a very thin layer of clay. And now I'm taking the water and just kind of smoothing out all my little finger marks. Um, I don't know if this step is really necessary, but I figured it'd be hard to do it later on. So I just did it now. All right, now I'm finally ready to put the stamp on. So I'm just trying to make sure the rabbit is in the center and I'm going to push down just like I did the other stamp. I'm just doing it very slowly, making sure especially like the ears and the whiskers and the face are all pushed down in there. So I think that came out kind of okay. I feel like it's kind of hard to tell at this point. I'm just going to have to let it dry and paint it and see if this really worked out. I don't find it's like as crisp as the um, crockery stamps came out, but this is, you know, it's an animal. So I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see and hold our opinions till the end. Now I'm doing the same thing I did on the other stamp. I'm just smoothing out all the edges and just trying to get as thin as possible. All right, next we're moving on to this cute little rusty can. Now I already like the rustiness, so I want to try to keep that. So I think for this one, we're going to try a mold and I'm going to try the air dry clay that IOD makes. Now you're supposed to add like cornstarch or something onto the mold so it doesn't stick. I don't have any of that and I don't have baby powder because after the baby made it snow in her room the last time, I was like, uh, uh we ain't having no more of this in the house. So what I do have is flour and that seemed to work perfectly fine. So any kind of like powdery substance you have in your house should work for this. And I just brushed it on and just kind of turned it over like a baking pan to get the excess out. And this is the first time ever that I've used a mold, but it's so simple. You just push the clay in and the edges are raised. So to get the excess clay out, I'm going to try to explain this the best of my ability. You just kind of take your finger and just kind of like push on the edge and then the excess clay just kind of like beads off. And um, it was it was very, very simple to do this. And then to get the bird out, I just kind of like wiggled the mold around and it just popped right out. Oh my God, I was so excited. It came out so perfect. Y'all, I've never done this before. It was really, really easy. Okay, so 
Now I am going to use glue. So I'm using my Gorilla Clear Grip Adhesive that I use on everything. And I just put it on the clay and then I'm just going to stick it on there and just push down and we'll see how that goes. I feel like you could probably like also let it dry on here without the glue if you wanted to paint it and then attach it later on. I kind of didn't think about that ahead of time, but I feel like that's another option. Okay. Now I want to try something else. I didn't really like the way the rabbit came out because I ended up having to put clay on almost the whole thing, which I feel like kind of defeats the purpose. Like I could have just painted the bucket and stamped it, but we're experimenting here. So I wanted to see if I could like just make the stamp out of clay. Are you following what I'm saying? So I'm using a mat and I have the stamp under it so I know about what shape it needs to be and there'll be less to cut out later on. And make sure you put flour down on your mat so the clay doesn't stick to it. And now that I got that, I'm using a sheep on this one. Now that I got the outline, I'm just kind of like watering it down a little bit to, um, just smooth it out. Now, when you water down, I think I forgot to say this earlier, let it dry for a minute because I do find it stamps better when it's a little bit dry and not wet. I do feel like it works better straight out of the package than wet. I know I did say that earlier, but also if you're wetting it down like this before you stamp it, give it a few minutes to dry. So now I'm going to take my sheep and I'm just going to stamp it on to the clay. I'm just going to push down just like I did all the other ones, just making sure all the detail is there. Now, it's hard to tell at this moment if it's going to work. I feel like pushing down kind of distorts the animal a little bit, which isn't a big deal with a crockery stamp. But when it's an animal, it might be a big deal. So once again, we're going to have to hold our criticism till the end. I feel like I'm going to have to see it painted to really be able to tell, but it kind of looks like a big fluffy dog to me right now. Okay, so I'm taking just a plastic knife and I'm just cutting around the, ex the excess around the edges. Now this one has a serrated edge, which I felt like wasn't a good option. I probably should have stopped and went get a smooth edge knife. Um, but I didn't, I kept going. So use a smooth edge knife. Okay, now I'm just peeling it off. It came off super easy and I'm just putting it on the center of my bucket and now I'm just going to smush down those edges. And then I decided maybe I should add a little bit of glue. So I'm going back and adding a little bit of glue. And then I'm just gonna push all the edges into the bucket. Uh, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but we will see. I'm not having much confidence in this one. <laughs> Maybe it'll come back to life with paint. Let's cross our fingers. I have a whole bunch of paint cans and I'm going to do some on every single one because I want to try different things, but I'm not going to film every one. I'm just going to film when I'm doing something different. So I feel like the sheep one didn't come out good, but it did give me another idea I did the same thing except I, except I used a crockery stamp. And before I took the stamp off of the clay, I decided to use the edge of the stamp as my way to cut all the excess off. And this time I'm using a smooth knife and it works so much better. So this is gonna be kind of like a crockery label on there except you know it's raised instead of stamping it so I thought this was a great idea so we're gonna try this one and these are good for the rustic cans because I want to try to keep the rust in these cans so I don't want it to cover them with clay so I feel like that was a good option for those so for this next paint can, I really wanted it to look like a label on the can. So I used two of the bird molds and then I had these letter stamps. These are from Amazon and I decided to put the word love on it. So let's see how these letters turn out. So I'm just going to push them in. I put them on an IOD mat 
they like all these stamps kind of like stick onto these mats to make them easier to use and then I'm just pushing them into my little clay label that I created and then I'm going to pull it up I'm just making sure it's really on there two of the letters stuck in the clay no big deal it's easy to pull them up y'all I love how this turned out so much I thought this was so perfect I cannot wait to see this piece painted. I think it's gonna be amazing. So the clay has been drying for two days. The package directions did say to let dry for 36 to 48 hours. I did this only because I wasn't home yesterday. So I'm just getting back to this project today, but I feel like the clay dried pretty fast and had I had to the time to do it, I probably would have painted them the same day so I think it's just up to you whatever your time schedule is now you can see I did every single can I had so I just want to go through and talk about each one of them since I didn't show them all on camera now I think the only one that is pretty questionable which I was questioning this one while I was making it is this lamb that looks like a fluffy dog it has a broken leg and cracked I don't feel like that's a huge deal. We're going for a rustic look here. So we're still going to paint it and see how it comes out. So this is the first one I did, I believe. And this is the first one I'm going to paint. It looks great. It is hard. It is stuck on there. The stamp looks amazing. And this one is the rusted one where I did two of the bird molds and glued them on with the Gorilla Grip, Grip Clear Adhesive. And that looks great. It stayed on there great. This one's probably my favorite with the two birds that I stamped the word love on. Can't wait to paint that up. So this one, I want it to look, it to look like a label. And then, so this one I'm thinking about adding more clay because I think it looks kind of silly that I literally just did the whole front with clay. Like it doesn't look like a label or anything. So... I'm kind of thinking about just adding clay to the entire can and see how that looks. So I don't know. We'll see about that one. And then how cute is this one? So I loved how the stamp came out so much on this one. So I decided to make another piece of clay that looks like a label and then put fresh flowers on it. And then I just put like a little hole here and a little hole here so it'll look like it's attached to the bucket. I think this one's going to be really cute as well. And then these, I did this one kind of like I did the first one where I put the stamp on and just pushed out the edges. And then you saw me do this one on camera where I kind of cut it out so it looks kind of like, you know, a label stuck on there, a thick label. I like how that one looks. And I pretty much did the same thing with this one with just a different stamp. So while the stamp was on there, I cut out the edges with my knife. And then the cute little bird one. I think this one sold because one of my customers came to pick something up and saw me working on these. And she's like, um, I think I have to have that one. So I got to send her a picture when I'm done. All right, let's get started painting these and see how they come out. For this can, what I'm doing is I'm starting off with some gray chalk paint in the color mineral and some baking soda. I already mixed it up. It's about a half to half ratio. I have a very detailed video on these painting techniques i'll put it in the description below if you want to watch a more detailed video on this and then i'm painting the piece now i messed up here because i find the texture of the baking soda is kind of filling in some of the details of the stamp and i don't want that to happen so what i did to, to fix this is i went back and i just took a wet brush and went over what I had already done and it kind of smoothed it out. And then on my other ones that I did the textured paint, what I did was I used a different brush and just painted the color on there. So what I should have done with this one is taken the Waverly paint in the color mineral and just painted my stamp first without the texture on it and then go back and paint the whole piece. So that's a little tip, learn from my mistakes. Don't put the textured on to the stamp if you really want all the details of the stamp to come out. 
Now you can see this first coat of paint isn't going on great. Don't stress about it. Just get one coat of paint on there and then let it dry and you'll see that the second coat goes on much better. If you keep going over it, it's just not gonna do anything. You wanna let it dry and then come back. Okay, so I really want it to be textured around where the clay ends because I want it to kind of blend in. I'm trying to just like make the whole piece look blended in and then the only thing that stands out is the stamp. Okay, here I am on the second coat of paint and you can see how great it covers up with the second coat of paint. So just let your piece dry and usually like two coats of paint, I'm good. You wanna thoroughly let it dry in between and don't go too hard with your second coat of paint. Just get it on there and stop. And then if you have to do a third, that's fine. But if you overly mess with it, then it's gonna be a nightmare. And I decided to go ahead and paint the tops of these as well. And if you're wondering what I'm gonna do inside the can, I should have did this to begin with, but I don't have any white spray paint. I'm just gonna go and spray paint the insides of these white, that way they look kind of professional and nice as well. Okay, this one is my favorite. I love how this came out and this was also the easiest one. So I kind of want this bird to blend in with the rust canister. So all I'm doing is taking my Waverly antiquing wax and I'm brushing it just onto the bird. And then I'm going to take just a paper towel, you could use a towel, just whatever you have, and you're just gonna wipe back some of that antiquing wax to let some of that white detail show through. And I just think this is a perfect little embellishment on this rust rusty can. I love how this one came out so much. Absolutely adorable. This next one, I'm gonna do basically the same thing, except this can is a little bit more shiny than the last one. The last one was just perfectly rusted over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the entire canister with the antiquing wax. So I'm gonna cover the whole thing and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my little paper towel and I'm gonna dab instead of wiping because I wanna kinda like keep the texture that this rust has. So I'm just dabbing it off and if you feel like you take off too much of the antiquing wax, you can add some more on. If you feel like you don't have enough, you can add some more on. So it's kind of like you can't mess this up. It's just whatever look you are going for. And after I looked at it, the antiquing wax had dried and I kind of wanted to take off a little bit more on the, um, the label, so what I did was I took a wet paper napkin and I was able to kind of like reactivate the antiquing wax and pull off a little bit more. So you really can't mess this up. I love how this one came out. So this one, I used the antiquing wax to paint the label on here. And so the whole thing kind of looks like the rusty color. Now I'm gonna bring it in my shop and with my spray gun, I'm gonna spray white chalk paint on it. And then once it dries, we'll distress it and see how this one comes out. I just want to show y'all because I'm not going to film me spray painting this. I'm just going to come back and distress it for y'all. So on this little sheep dog, we're going to do an experiment that I've been wanting to do for a little while. I'm just using this Apple Barrel paint in the color Laguna. And then I'm using this Heritage chalk paint that I got from a local hardware store. This is actually the color of the ceiling in the baby's nursery. If y'all have not seen my nursery tour of my baby's room, oh my gosh, y'all. It is like the cutest nursery ever. It still looks exactly the same. I love that room so much. I'm gonna put it in the link below if you want to check that out. It's very vintage. So if you're into vintage girl stuff, this is you need to watch this video. Anyway, <laughs> all I'm doing is I'm mixing the color Laguna with some baking soda. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody use saw wash, but I'm kind of hoping for that kind of look here. That's what I'm going for. So I am just dabbing it on with my chip brush and really trying to create lots of texture. I'm, I'm not gonna cover the whole piece. I'm just trying to be kind of random with it and sticking it all over the place. Um, just trying to create as much texture as I can with like this, this color is a little bit brighter than I thought it would be, but I think it'll be okay. Um, and then I decided to go all the way around the edges of the little sheep. That way I could fill in any cracks or anything that was going on, any imperfections could be covered by this baking soda and paint. 
Okay, now we are moving on to the Lovebirds. I'm mixing this green color with some baking soda for a textured effect, but like I told y'all on the gray one, um, the textured paint just kind of filled in a lot of the details on the label. So I'm just going with a different brush and painting my label green first. So this green color is just latex wall paint that I had. So this works great with baking soda. You can definitely go get like a sample from your local hardware store and be able to paint a lot of stuff with that sample. Now I'm putting on the textured paint. I'm just kind of dabbing it on, brushing it on, however you want to do it. You want to get it on your whole piece. Remember, just get that first coat on and then the second coat will go on much better. I do want to make sure the label has like a little bit of texture. So I'm just kind of like dry brushing on a little bit of texture on there. That way the whole piece kind of blends together a little bit better. And now that I got the paint on, I'm just kind of dabbing with my dry brush just to add a little bit more texture on here because I thought it wasn't textured quite enough. So it's just whatever look you're particularly going for. I wanted a little bit more texture on this piece. So this is a way to add it by just simply dabbing your brush on. All right, now it's time to start finishing up these pieces. So this is the rabbit bucket that I said I was going to add clay to the whole piece. I did that and I did this first and just let it dry up until I was ready to work on it and it dried pretty quickly. Oh, also I did a, I sprayed it with a coat of white paint just to make sure everything was the same color. So the whole thing has been painted with white. Now all I'm going to do is go with antiquing wax and just paint on the entire piece. You really want to make sure you get it in all the little grooves because that's where you want it to stay. And then we're going to wipe back the antiquing wax to reveal all the details. So I'm not watering down the antiquing wax, but later on I ended up watering it down because once I wiped it back, it was just too brown for me. I don't like it to be that brown. So what I did is I just went wet my paper towel and then I was able to pull off even more of the antiquing wax. So there's really no like right or wrong way to do this. It just depends what you are looking for. For me, it was too dark. So here it is. My paper towel is wet and you can see what a difference that makes. So I've only done the front of that one. And when I went to the back, I actually watered down the antiquing wax. So that way I wouldn't have to take off as much. All right, let's see how this piece is going to turn out. So I have my piece of sandpaper. If you remember, I had that textured bright paint underneath. So I'm just using my sandpaper to bring it back. Now... It did work, but I feel like I should have did a different color combination. I don't feel like in the end it was a big enough color difference. Like had I painted the bright color underneath and did white on top, I feel like that would have made more of a difference because I ended up going back and white waxing this entire piece. So in the end, you didn't really see it that much. Um, but you know, I was just experimenting and so that's what I did. <laughs> and then let me talk about the clay for a second because you saw me use two different clays. So I want to give y'all my review on the clays. Honestly, I thought they worked both exactly the same. Like I can't even tell the difference between one clay from the other on the pieces that I used because I tried each on both pieces. So I would say just go with whatever one you're comfortable with. I felt like both of them worked great and felt the same to me. Now we're going to make some white wax using the Waverly Clear Wax and just some Apple Barrel white paint. So I'm not measuring this out. I'm just eyeballing it. But you want to put a little bit of white wax and then a little, I'm sorry, a little bit of clear wax and a little bit of white paint. If you put it on and you feel like it's too white, then you could always just add more clear wax. But you do want more wax than paint. That I am sure of. So I'm just putting it in a bowl. I'm mixing it up. Most of the rest of the pieces will get white wax, but I'm only going to video one of them because it's going to be the same process on every single piece. So once your wax is mixed, you're just going to put it on your piece. Also, you could do this method and do any color wax you want. 
which I think would be cool. I should have tried like a different color wax on one of them, but I thought about it after they were all done. Like the rabbit one, that might have been cool to do like a teal blue color wax and see how that one turned out. So that might be a project for a different day. We'll try some colored waxes. So basically you're just, like I said, you're just painting it on and then you're gonna get your paper towel and just wipe it off. And it is the same as the antiquing wax. If you wipe it off and you feel like enough isn't coming off, you can go and wet your paper towel and be able to pull some more of that wax off. What happens is the wax will stay in the cracks of your piece and then you're wiping off the top layer and that just makes all the texture pop and it gives it this amazing cement look when you use it with gray. Now, I think you need to be careful because you are wetting your chalk paint that is underneath and you see how I have that little spot that came up. Um, you're reactivating the chalk paint. And I think what I'm actually gonna do is go back to the hardware store and just color match this because there's no re reason to use chalk paint unless you're distressing these pieces. So I think I wanna get some latex paint for when I do this effect. That way I don't have to worry about it pulling the paint up. But as you can see, it's really easy to fix. If this happens to you, just leave it alone, let it dry, and then go back and fix it. All right, guys, are y'all ready for the big reveal? I am actually kind of shocked at how great these turned out. I'm going to go through each one and tell y'all exactly what I did to them. Since this video was kind of running long, I didn't want to film the end of every one, especially if I was doing the same steps over and over again. So this is the first one I started with where I did the stamp on the clay. Like you can't even barely see where the clay ends. It just blended in perfectly. I love that. I love the detail on this one. Look how good this looks with lavender. I love, love, love this one. But of course we had to experiment. This one I also really liked. It says fresh flowers. All I did was I painted the background gray and I left this the natural clay color and then I went over it with the white wax and then I just hot glued some little tacks in there so it looks like that this label is nailed in. All right, here's the sheep. <laughs> Um, I think it kind of came out okay. Do y'all think it looks like a sheep? What do y'all think? I ended up going back over it with white wax because I felt like it needed that. So you don't see that bright color really coming through, but this is definitely my least favorite one. And then this is the Lovebirds. I uh, love this one. I did that dark green color and then i put some white wax over it so pretty i love this color and then look at the rabbit i'm shocked at how great the rabbit came out so i feel like it did take a little while to put clay over the whole thing but i love the way that it came out it really didn't take that much clay since um, you do a very thin layer, so this is definitely possible, and yeah, I, what y'all think about this one? I really like it, and I feel like you can tell that it's a rabbit, so the rabbit came out pretty good, the rabbit stamp, I think that one worked, and then this one is so beautiful, so what I did for this one, I love the ones with the molds, I just feel like the molds are exceptional on these pieces, so I did the two birds, and then I painted this, the dark antiquing wax, so it kind of blended in with the rust. And then I went over the entire thing with white wax, and it just kind of gave it like a more muted look, because you can see here it is the natural rust one, and then the white wax rust. And I just think this is absolutely beautiful. The rusted ones are also my favorite. I love those. So this is the bird, and the crockery stamp that I did and then this is the one that I painted white with white chalk paint and distressed it it's okay I much prefer this look so this one I didn't do anything to remember I just antiqued the bird and then this one I antiqued the whole thing so even if you have it rusted and it's a little bit more shinier than you what you want you can go and put your antiquing wax on the whole thing 
and it looks great. So, I mean, this one's okay. And then this one is the same as this one right here, just on a smaller scale. So I prefer it where you kind of make the clay blend into your piece where it doesn't come out all the way or you make it look like a label. That's what I like. But for this technique, I'm kind of obsessed with the molds. I just feel like they're so pretty, y'all. So pretty. Today's video was so fun just experimenting and having fun and just being very artistic and just making my vision come to life. So please leave a comment below and let me know what was the, your favorite one that I worked on today or what was your favorite technique. I really do want to know what y'all thought about these product, pro, projects. <laughs> I'm too excited. Um, and if these are the kind of videos you love, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I do lots of DIYs, thrift flips, thrift store shopping, all kind of fun stuff like that. Just tons of fun over here. And I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all on the next video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big